What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York here at Aftershock Festival 2022, and we are here with Ryan of Airborne. Great to be able to talk with you, man. Hey, man. How are you? Doing excellent, man. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm good, thanks. Good, beautiful day. Yeah. Bit of, bit of rock and roll. It's great. You can't go wrong with rock and roll, and it's always hot, right? Yeah, yep. absolutely. But now that your latest album, Bone Shanker, is uh, two years old now, pretty much, or almost three, actually, do you have like an overall conclusion on this record cycle and what we could be expecting from Airborne in the future? Well, yeah, I mean, we're sort of finishing up now, pretty much, with uh, coming out of the last two years and whatnot. So uh, the record didn't get the run it probably could have had, but that's all right. Like, we're, we're ready. We're really ready to go in the studio. So after Europe, which is at the end of the year, we're going to get straight on to the next record. Um, and everyone's really super pumped at the label and everything. So they're... We're thinking big things, so yeah. it's good, yeah. Hell yeah. Has Airborne always taken a new approach to every single album, or is there like a sound that you like try to stick with? Because I feel like you have a dedicated fan base, and every time you put out a new album, your fans are always happy. You know? Well, I mean, yeah, we tried different things a little bit. Like, we tried something a bit different, a bit like, I don't know, a bit more rougher on the last record, but this one, we're really, really intensely focused on making it a the biggest sounding airborne record we've ever made and i think we needed to make the last one to get in the, the mind space to do what we're about to do is it easier to come up with new ideas when all the members are sort of like in the company of each other because you guys are so rock and roll and it's very organic you guys are a rock band or is it easier to like maybe cultivate ideas for drums or guitar when you guys are kind of like more alone in your own element yeah well joel and i being brothers we'll work together drums and guitar so we can we can make a core of something um but it, it's weird like we are already, we made a song the other day just when we were walking home from, a, from eating dinner, you know, and we're just talk, constantly talking. And then you get the band involved, like in Soundcheck, and it becomes this other thing again. Um, so, yeah, it's, there's always a similar process. It's about the, song, about the band getting its core riffs first. Because that's what the band is. It's riff orientated. 100%. Know? And yeah. no better song describes that better than Too Much, Too Young, Too Fast. When you go right into that, <laughs> it's so crunching and rib crushing and skull crushing. Yeah. 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 Um, when it comes to for you being uh, the drummer of Airborne, do you need uh, music before you lay down your aspects? You mentioned it's very riff driven and that's where it starts off. Has there ever been a time where maybe you had a whole drum pattern written or an idea and the band could write over that? No, it's de generally whatever the riff requires, the drums will help it so um usually build the drums around the riff yeah always and you know we're not going to talk shit but when people present the music to you and there is no drums how off time is it sometimes uh well i mean i guess there's always well there's sometimes my brother will just record on a drum machine so but uh that's one way to troll your brother right <laughs> everyone's everyone's very good got very good rhythm we're all uh yeah they're all pretty good yeah um, when it comes to playing live, this was, believe it or not, my first Airborne show that I've ever seen. Oh, um, cool. Yep. So when it comes to playing live, like, is there a similar energy that you put into your songwriting as you do when you're playing live, or are they two completely separate arts altogether? Well, you try and capture, you, you, you set up an environment when you're making a record to capture that, uh, but you can't, you can't replace a, a real show. Um, and the thing is with playing shows, you can rehearse as much as you possibly want, but there's something that happens on stage, especially with this band, that you just, you can't rehearse or you can't, it's very difficult to, to try and mimic it. That being said, that's pretty much the exact goal of what the next record's going to be, is to properly catch up. Because the thing is with Airborne, that's, it's like, you can tell somebody about the band, that's great, but unless they come to a show, it's, they don't really get what it is. And then we need to capture that on a record. 100%, and you know, People say, I, I've always said with every Airborne album, it's even though they aren't live albums, they do feel like a live album yeah. because it has that live rock and roll vibe Absolutely, to it. And you try to yeah. keep it as raw as possible, right? Yeah, 100%. Yep. Now, being a drummer, being that you know their uh, drums are very, very rhythm oriented and there is a melody really incorporated in it, but is there any emotion that is channeled into your instrumentation when you are tracking drums and playing them? Well, it's about groove. Um, you know, I don't really do drum solos, but. You know, the certain way a song is thought about, whether it's a song where you, it's a jump song, whether people are jumping to it, you know, there's a certain groove to that to get people to jump. Or if you want to go forward rocking, like a circle pit vibe, that's a different 
That's a different 4-4. Funny thing is, they're only a few BBMs off. Uh, we don't use click tracks or, or um, tracks, or there's no in-ears for the drums. So I'm purely going off what's in my head. And I'll also count Joel into songs as well on a ghost mic. So I have a, I have a mic straight to his ear. So I can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or one, two, three, four, one, bam, and they jump. Are you? So I'm imagining the crowd jumping, and then I'm counting him in. That's awesome. You're, yeah. you, that's like almost, it's almost like the drummer from behind is really uh, bringing into the crowd well, interaction. He's, he's up there going, you know, blah, 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 we're from here, blah, 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 blah. He, 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 you know, and then he, needs to, he doesn't have time to go away and think about what jump speed is. So he's talking to the crowd, and I'm sitting back there going, one, two, three, four, go. And he goes in and it's just boom, boom, and they start jumping. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking awesome. That's one of the best drummer uh, answers I've ever gotten. <laughs> like, for real. Uh, that's incredible. Here comes the most difficult part of the interview. Are you ready? Yep. How do you know when a song is done? Never. You never know. Yeah, I get you that never all the time. Know. And that's why you generally, when you're working with a record with someone else, like a producer or something, you know, they'll help you stop. Yeah. Yeah, because you never know. Because you can overdo it. 100%. It can be overdone. So there's a fine line between greatness and... Not. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, the final question I wanted to ask you is, uh, originating from Australia, um, you know, there's been so many great bands within the last couple of years that come out in Australia, but I always think of like a lot of metal bands like Parkway Drive, uh, Neil Blood Ascaris, um, you know, a lot of these, you know, very heavy bands. But for, for rock and roll, which you guys are without a doubt rock and roll in my eyes, how has the scene in Australia been kind of like originating from there? For rock and roll, as rock and roll sense, uh, not a lot. I mean, we, are, we have just come out of a pandemic, so yeah. as far as new music to go, it's a hard one. Um, I'm still trying to grasp where music's at, to be honest, but we're, we're just still doing what we've been doing for quite a while. and So I've been living in the airborne bubble for a little bit, but... It's picking up, though. It's picking up, yeah. Yeah. I've always said it's uh, Sweden with sand. There you go, yeah. Yeah. Definitely a lot of bands come out of Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> I, will you be? I've been recommending this to every band from Australia. Could Airborne possibly be the first band to ever play on top of the Ayers Rock? Well, they don't let you up there anymore. I did climb it when I was a kid. Um, which Fuck the rules. This is rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. We'll ask them. We'll ask them. We yeah. That'd be, a, that'd be actually a really good... Uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I would kill to see that happen at least <laughs> once. Yeah. It's, 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 rock the rock. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Rock the rock. There we go. Rock the rock festival. You, I think you and Love I may it. be on to something. Love it. But thank you so much. Before we go, uh, is there just anything else that, with Airborne that you would like to promote in terms of tours? And uh, when can we be expecting the new Airborne album? I don't know. Just tell your friends about us. And uh, we're going to have a record, hopefully, somewhat later next year. And we're going to keep rocking. Hell yeah. Well, thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Airborne. We'll see you next time on Heavy New York, Aftershock 2022.